The other big theory from this mm -hmm. is I think, I mean, May and Osha are a dyad. They gotta be, right? The homeboy is out here crushing up leaves and quoting the Sith code. Can I blow your mind? Sure, I blow think, it. I think Kamir is toothy Sith guy. Then you have to ask yourself, why were four Jedi stationed on Brendok? Maybe they knew about this dyad and the horrible thing that the Jedi had to do that made them so guilty is they... Welcome back to Beyond the Dune Sea, a show all about that galaxy far, far away and beyond. My name is Connor. And I'm Seth. Hey, my friends. We have new Star Wars to talk about this week. We're all dressed to the nines for it, in fact. How about that? Yeah? Yeah, yeah. But before we get to that, this week, we don't have a favorite comment because... We had a little special thing that happened in our little circle here in our community last week. Something pretty cool that I wanted to shout out that was really fun. Last week, we had our villains tier list as kind of preparation for the Acolyte, a little appetizer. And that we had a, a some, some technical difficulties <laughs> with getting the episode edited and uploaded on time. So it was pretty delayed. And while filming it, let's while, be honest. And while filming it, there's a lot behind it, the scenes that was going on. Yes. And um, we had a lot of outside help too, a lot of great collaboration. And once again, thank you so much for the collaboration on from all of our friends out there, all those other creators. It was so much fun to do, but it was also really hard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and when we were uploading... I put it up on Saturday and I was like, I'm not going to lie to you guys. Like, you know what? I just kind of want to get this out of there because this has been so, I've had so many issues. I just want to get it up and done. And if it's going to release at 11 o'clock at night on a Saturday, I guess it's going to release at 11 o'clock on a Saturday. And I put up a poll on our Instagram and I was like, hey, are you, do you guys want want this tonight? And wait, a, lot, a lot of you guys said yes. And guys, that's an all-timer like memory for me for this show. Even brought me out. Even Seth came out to the live chat. That yeah. show released at 11 p.m. our time on the YouTube channel. We did a premiere and the live chat was going the entire time until 1.30 in the morning. You guys, it was so much fun. We, we had so much fun talking. We had BC Scrubs on the other side of the world. Yeah, we finally got some of the <laughs> some of our international viewers involved yes. that aren't usually able to participate. Yeah. It was so much fun. It mm -hmm. was just so cool to have the community come out and just just have a good time and celebrate some Star Wars. Just vibing. It was, it was good. So that yeah. so not only did I want to thank those people, those other creators who came out to play on that episode, yeah. but also you guys, that seriously, that was that was awesome. It yeah. was really cool. So, our favorite comment is go go rewatch that episode with the chat on with the live chat because it's it's a good time. It was fun. Yeah, it was just a fun time to to be a Star Wars fan and just yeah. hang out. Yeah, yeah. So it was cool. So thank you guys. But th this week we have new Star Wars, the Acolyte. Yeah. This has been this has been the show, right? It's been kind of hanging out there in the distance. Like, what is this going to be? Like, what in the world? Mm -hmm. um, it's the first thing outside of the Skywalker saga, the first canon thing anyway, right? Yeah. Um, who are these characters? This is going to be High Republic, first time in live action. That's interesting. Yeah. A lot of unknowns. Featuring the bad guys. That's all new. Yeah. Yeah. A show from the Darksiders perspective crazy it is yeah yeah so let's just get right into this a yeah. one minute review i'll do my best okay <laughs> i guess we're going keep it brief because we're gonna dive in don't yeah, worry yeah um so overall i did enjoy it i liked more than what i didn't like there was still some stuff that didn't set well with me mm -hmm. we'll get into that um i think most of the characters are interesting. I think that uh, Osha and Pitt together, I mean, I would just watch them do their thing. Like, I thought that that was the, the best moments in the show. Um, I thought the fighting was good. I think when it gets a little too wiry, like them hopping around, I think it kind of loses me a little bit where I'm just like, that's not that's not how the horse works. <laughs> you know, I like that, that kind of came into play. Um, I, it, it left me questioning, uh, the Jedi and the Sith both in different ways. And so I'm hoping that some of those questions can get answered. I am really curious if, are they going to try to work in the, um, 
work anything in from uh, Legends, or are they reinventing the wheel? Okay. So, but I'm intrigued, and that's what you want. Uh, but I really do feel like this is like a super slow burn right now because yeah. I feel like they keep introducing problems, but they're fixing the problems within the episode. Yeah, basically. So, yeah. Yeah, it's interesting you say slow burn because that's how we opened Ahsoka. We're like yeah. this slow burn, like that was literally in our opening mm -hmm. <laughs> of that episode of our very first episode. Yeah, and this is a different type of slow burn, I think, because we're, like you said, we're answering questions very quickly. Whereas with Ahsoka, I think we were setting up a lot of mysteries yeah. in a very slow way where we weren't answering questions. Yeah. So my one minute review is I'm kind of in the same boat. I liked a lot of what I saw. Um, production design, first of all, out of this world. I thought yeah. it was fantastic. I think I'm in a minority on this opinion, but I didn't think the music was that great. You don't hear um, a lot of it. Yeah, when it, was, you, it was a lot more subtle, which I've it, heard from yes. some of our mutual friends that they enjoyed that. Yeah. I personally, I don't, music means a lot in Star Wars. We talked about that a lot, you know, and um, maybe it's just a me thing and that's okay if it's just a me thing, but I thought it was a little lacking, yeah. if I'm honest. Uh, so um, you know, but we'll see how it goes as the season continues. Mm -hmm. Um, there just wasn't a moment where I was like, man, that really like crescendoed in the right way. And yeah. Cause then, yeah. you know, there are a lot of scenes in star Wars that you remember because of the music or yeah. it's enhanced by the music. Exactly. And there, there wasn't a moment that in the show so far mm -hmm. that I was like, ah, oh, that's it. You know? And it's not even a John Williams thing. Like Mandalorian has that. And so does book of Boba Fett, even a show I'm not even super fond of. And yeah. I'll even give it to Andor. Andor. I really like the opening theme of that show, but so far. I don't know. Nothing really stood out. Yeah. Um, characters. I'm liking a lot of these characters quite a bit, yeah. um, with the exception of one, which we yeah. will talk about. Um, so that's a highlight. I was really worried about it because it's tough to bring out new characters and, in this world. Oh, and let alone that many. Yeah. Too. An entirely new cast. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So delighted about that. Um, my One of my, my, my biggest issue though, so far, this does not feel as fresh as I had hoped. Yeah. Um, it feels a little, a little bland, unfortunately. And now, th again, this is the first two episodes. We'll see. Yeah, I'm very open minded about where we're headed. We got another six. Yeah, we got yeah. a lot more to go. Mm -hmm. But for a show that's been billed for so long since this was announced back in that Disney Plus day, way back when, that's ancient history now about the show from the Dark Siders perspective. We've gotten very little dark side perspective yeah, at this point. I was going to say, what, 85, 15? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I'm like, you know, hopefully that changes going forward, like yeah. with the kind of the mysteries that they're setting up. Mm -hmm. But I would have liked the story to have unfolded as it has so far, yeah. more from the perspective of May, from the master and all this. It just feels like more of the same. Like we've, I feel like you take the, this, this cast of characters, you throw... Uh, Obi Wan, Anakin, and the gang in like, or in Ahsoka and Jackie's place, and all this stuff. It could be an arc in the Clone Wars. Yeah, you know, like replace May with Asajj Ventress, and yeah. replace the Master with Count Dooku, and yeah. Uh, but isn't that kind of a good thing though? That it at least is feeling like everything else. It is. It's but just it, nothing new. But at the same time, I yeah. feel like this was the show to be different, to kind of break the wheel. Yeah, and. I think that if any show was going to really step outside of that mold, this was the one to do it. Yeah. And just so far, I'm like, yeah, this just it kind of feels the same. And I get it. It's like, you're going to have people out there be like, yeah, Star Wars fans are never happy. It's like, it's, if it's different, it's too different. If it's the same, it's the same. And it's like, yeah. no, no, no I'm, I'm enjoying what I'm getting so far. It's just, you told me this was going to be a certain type of show. And I feel like it's a different show than what you told me it was going to yeah. be. So you fibbed. Yeah. Yeah. But who knows? Maybe by, maybe after this, now that we're after next week, we're only going to be getting dark side. We're yeah. going to be getting twists and turns and Sorry, all this soul. stuff. Sorry, soul. Yeah. You're out. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but overall, overall, I'm intrigued. They've, mm -hmm. they've hooked to me. I would say I'm, I was bummed when the last episode ended, especially yeah. with the little stinger that they gave. That was fun. With uh, the with the Wookiee? With the Wookiee, with Kelnaka. Yeah. Um, so I'm I'm here for it. I like it. Yeah. Uh, just not as, I'm not as intrigued as I thought I would be, I gotcha. guess. But, but that's okay. That's okay. I'm mm -hmm. excited to see where it goes. So that's very much not one minute, but <laughs> you know how it'd be here. I'll yeah. be on the Dune Sea. We can ramble. <laughs> so if you've never been here before, after we do the one minute reviews, we go into five ish takeaways. Now we have two episodes to talk about, so yeah. it may drift a little bit beyond five, but mm -hmm. we like to just kind of break down the things to take away from the episodes. Now we're not going to kind of just walk you through the episode because, Hey, if you're watching this, you probably seen the episode. So, yeah. uh, 
We're just going to kind of go on the things that stand out to us, break into some speculation, you know, some some who done it, some why done it. That yeah. seems to be more the question to me. Definitely. Uh, and yeah, let's just get into it. Yeah. So first thing out of the gate, I think, is just production design. Wow. What a feat in this show. Definitely. Definitely. I mean, somehow it looks and it sounds like Star Wars, which I think is a tough thing to do sometimes. It is. Yeah. It's very hard. That, that's one of the things I knock Andor for. Mm -hmm. I don't think it looks enough or sounds enough like Star Wars. Yeah. Or at least the other Star Wars. And this, the PowerPoint wipes with the- It's great. With the technology, yeah. with the certain fonts, with certain sound effects. I just felt like that it feels like, okay, this is proto Star Wars. Yeah. Like this is what will eventually become the prequels, which will then eventually become the original trilogy, which, yeah, it just looks like, okay, this is the beginnings of everything. Yeah. There were definitely yeah. moments I felt that too. Um, mm -hmm. One of them was- uh, that droid that kind of looked like a, a proto protocol droid almost that was that the enforcer the superior. Yeah. yeah he just he had that like i don't know a an older vibe to it but mm -hmm. also it's all new because yeah. we're in an older era well, and i thought that was interesting i mean you saw the gonk droid the original gonk right walking by oh no I yeah didn't see that. when I didn't catch uh, that. when osha first came out of her room there was like a little guy walking by and i'm like that has to be a gonk oh droid. that's fun yeah. okay okay and then also the uh um, in episode two, the the security thing that had the two eyes. Yes. Just like Java's Palace. Yeah, just like Java's yeah, Palace. Exactly. Yes. These are like proto things that are coming. Yeah, things yeah. that will have been upgraded over time. Exactly. And, uh, or did, downgraded. Yeah. yeah or downgraded. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Because that was something unique that George wanted to do when he went back to the prequels. Is like things did degrade and when they went to the original trilogy. Yep. Um, but now it's kind of interesting because they were, the Republic era mm -hmm. is kind of the height of technology. So yeah. we have regressed a little bit. So if you look at the the progression of technology. It's like if you have acolyte PT OT, it goes like this in like a curve, I think. Yeah. It's like where we start here, it mm -hmm. gets to the Republic and then we kind of start dive falling. back down. So yeah. that it is really interesting. I think, mm -hmm. um, I think though, from the production design standpoint, not only does it look like star Wars, but it's just, it looks good. Like it looks lived in. It looks, yeah. uh, it looks tangible. Like you can reach out and touch it. Like yeah. I know a lot of people uh, have issues with the volume. Yeah. And this is the first time I've noticed the difference because I've been a person, I've been, you know, a champion of the volume. I've, yeah. uh, I'm not tired of that style, but this is the first time I've really noticed the difference. Yeah. And it was in particular when she, when uh, May was walking through, uh, now I'm forgetting, there's a lot of new planets introduced. Yeah. Uh, the marketplace when she goes to the alchemist for the first time, when mm -hmm. she goes to Kamir for the first time. Yeah. I was like, wow, that's really, huh. They really built that. And I remember seeing set photos, uh, yeah. like they really built these towns. Well, I mean, too, with the extras walking by, it helps so much. Oh, and the yeah. aliens, like actual mm -hmm. practical alien yes. costumes. I do the, wish when we got a little bit more like actual, like not actual, like uh, aliens that we were familiar with. We did yes, get some. We but. did. Yeah. I Like I, of the new ones, that new, uh, well, one, I thought the bartender was cool looking. Yeah. In in the first episode. And then the second episode, where she gives money to that thing. It's got the red, it's got the eyes and then like the red thing over its mouth. Oh, yeah. yeah. It kind of looked like a Jawa a little yeah, bit. I yeah. I don't have any idea. Like things wild looking, but yes, it's just like, that's cool. That's a tangible thing. Mm -hmm. More yeah. of that, please. Yeah. Yeah. yeah right. I'm, I was into it. And then on the aliens, just a small thing, the Nemoidians. Yeah. Fun to see them. It's fun to see that they were back to their old tricks. And I got to give credit where it's due because we were really concerned about this show and were they going to stay true to their roots or not? And I think it's clear just from the production design standpoint mm -hmm. that the people who made this show care about Star Wars a yeah. lot. And even leaving out story right now, which I think so far is good. There's a lot of great callbacks to mm -hmm. all corners of Star Wars, yeah. which Got is really refreshing. about this. Yeah, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. uh, but the Nemoidians I thought was fun because I think that's ripped right out of Phantom Menace because what happens? You know, two yep. Jedi Knights. Yep, exactly. Come to uh, they, negotiations with the Nemoidians. And then they, they, they cave right then and there. Yeah. Yeah. I just, mm -hmm. I thought that was so fun. I'm like, mm -hmm. wow, you know, here we go. You know, just yeah. a nice little callback. Yeah. Nice little, and there were tons of little moments like that that I'm like, huh, that's neat. Yeah. Just a little, little, like little tip of the hat. Yeah. You know, and I, I appreciated that quite a bit. So, um, and I- very small thing, just a filmmaking uh -oh. thing that I liked a lot. Mm -hmm. You guys are going to be like, oh, who cares? But you can. when uh, the second escape pod jettisoned from the ship as it was, because the ship had lost power, mm -hmm. you know, it was kind of barreling through those asteroids uh, mm -hmm. toward the planet. When the second escape pod jettisoned, the ship also 
flew the opposite direction. Yeah, like it pushed it because yeah, because that's what would happen in space. Mm-hmm. I was, I, I that stuck out to me. I was like, huh, that's cool. I yeah. like that a little attention to detail because if that was in the atmosphere. That wouldn't happen, you know. It yeah. Just the escape pod would jettison, and then that would keep descending. falling the way it's going. Yeah, but they both had a, like a yeah. like that. They both went in opposite directions. Mm-hmm. Little thing, just a little tiny, little tiny detail. Yeah, but. They came out of space or came out of hyperspace in an asteroid field. Yeah, they sure did. Yeah. <laughs> huh. <laughs> I, thought, I thought it looked really, the visual effects looked really good. They weren't yeah. really, there wasn't a moment where I was like, ooh, you know? No, but I mean, there was some some scale shots where I was like, all right, this is still television at the same time. Sure. Yeah. But there wasn't, I don't think CG that, no. that was off. Yeah. Um, I, I will take practical effects that you can pick out any day over the kind of cheap well, looking CG. Yeah, 2003 CGI. Yeah. Bad 2003 CGI. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll take that because I'm, mm-hmm. hey, good CG is good CG. You yeah. Know, and I'll take that any day too. But if I have the choice between some practical effects that look a little bit fake versus bad CG, oh, give me the practical all day yeah, long. For definitely. sure. For sure. So hey, you mentioned her a minute ago. Uh, our, our main character. <gasps> yes. Uh, her name is the Occupational Safety and Health uh, administration yes she's fantastic yes. Uh, a little bit of a long name i don't know why she was named that it's kind of crazy uh, maybe you should try the acronym yeah the the osha yeah yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's wild to, to me that the character that's in charge of ship maintenance yeah. is named osha maybe it's a joke <laughs> i don't know that's yeah. so that's so funny to it's me. really weird though yeah like that's super on the nose yeah i don't know yeah. i just i think maybe maybe they came up with the name and then her occupation afterwards you're like hey this would be hilarious yeah but uh every time i've typed it in my notes it's auto corrected to all caps because oh. like for my job i yeah. have to work with osha so mm-hmm. so stupid joke i'm sure everybody's heard that a million times at this point but i thought it was funny mm-hmm. so uh but i thought she was f- first of all the twin thing i'm glad you mentioned it, and uh, uh, we had kind of some first reactions that we posted to Instagram. Yeah. You mentioned that you were glad that we got the twist thing out of the way. Yes, because, oh my gosh, could you imagine if they wrote that out and we know as the audience? Because it's like, yeah, especially with like how they were talking, it's like, how are they not twins? Yeah. Like, come on, guys, how are you not putting this together? Well, they, yeah. and this is a good time to talk about it. Lucasfilm, I think, has done such a disservice to this show and a lot of their recent shows. We talked about it with Bad Batch, with yeah. the trailers. It's true. Like, I'm about to take a barrage vow, guys, <laughs> against watching these trailers from here on out because, yeah. man, they spoil everything. They ruin everything. I don't really understand, like, what the uh, what the point of doing that is. And on the press tours, you know, where you have, like, and I get actors might slip up from time to time. So you had Amandala, which, by the way, I feel like such a bozo. I've been calling her Amanda. Her name's Amandala. She, there's I, an L in there. I'm so sorry, Amandala. I did not mean to, to mispronounce your name. Um, cause she, she does terrific in the show, by the way, yeah. uh, playing two completely different characters. Yeah. Yeah. But so I just I saw that they, it was in our group chat and I was like, I've been saying Amanda this whole time. And or no, I was on that video with Hayden Christensen. Mm-hmm. He was like, Hey, Amanda. And I'm like, why is he saying it like that? And I looked, I'm like, Oh man. Ah, oh no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Amanda, uh, so she said on the press tours, you know, that she's playing two characters and it's yeah. like, Oh, how could that be? Yeah. So I, I'm glad that they get that out of the way right away. Mm-hmm. That's nice. Yes. Because um, it's always like, I think you got to really take care of it. Uh, like the situation when the audience knows something, but the characters don't, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Like really it can be handle frustrating. That. Yes. Really handle that with care. Or you could really just like dive well, bomb. Well, it's different because the audience wasn't supposed to know this. Yeah. Until, but we did because of the yes. trailers and everything else. Like you were yeah. watching TV spots that had subtitles that said OSHA. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, guys. We know that the Agolite's name is May. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, even though when OSHA first wakes up though, it's like, hmm. Her hair is different. Yes. Like, the, the, there's just slight differences. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that would have been fun if they wanted to keep the twist going. Mm-hmm. That could have been fun to like pick out those little things. I It actually reminded me a little bit of a, uh, the last Jedi with Luke's lightsaber. Yeah. When he comes out, because you like you as the audience member, you're like, wait, that, that just broke. That just broke. Yeah. Like, it doesn't make any sense. And so mm-hmm. it's it's a clue the filmmakers are giving you. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm glad that they get that out of the way right away. Uh, but this character of Osha, I actually found kind of refreshing in a lot of ways. Uh she's kind of a unique character, but also familiar in a lot of ways too. I oh, found yeah. her very Ahsoka-esque. She's very good at fixing things. She's yeah. nice. She's got a droid friend. I, she reminded me of Ray. 
Yeah, she's got some Ray in there too. Yeah. I mm-hmm. think if you took, I personally viewed it like you take Anakin and Ahsoka and fusion dance those two. Yeah. Osha. Yeah. Like that's, that's how I viewed well, it. Well, Dragon Ball reference. Yeah. Yeah. Is that what that's from? Fusion dance. Yeah. yeah. That's the one with uh, uh, Vegeta, right? Yes. Is it actually? Yes. Oh man, I was trying to pick the wrong one so no, I could annoy you. Did you did it. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> shucks. Maybe on the next one. Yeah. <laughs> Um, <laughs> good job <laughs> but, uh, I thought that so like Ahsoka right has to leave the Jedi Order and yeah. there's been a lot of parallels between those two scenes mm-hmm. right when Ahsoka is running away from Anakin to the cliff side on Coruscant versus when Osha is running from Sol, Yord and Jeki yeah. uh, on that planet again I'm forgetting the planet names the snowy planet yeah a uh, lot of lot of great parallels and she's very Ahsoka-esque and she did leave the Jedi Order at a certain time um, but what I think is interesting is like she doesn't leave to go she does kind of leave to do the same thing, actually, now that I think about it. Because Ahsoka goes, she's kind of like a mechanic for a little bit, right? Kind of, yes. She like does odd jobs and stuff. So yeah. she's very similar in that way. But I do appreciate a character that leaves the Jedi Order not to just be bad. So we see that a lot too. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of interesting. Yeah. Um, so I don't know, just I found her, and she's also very heartwarming. Like yeah. I found her very like, she's very compassionate, very... uh easy, easy to like. She reminded me of Ray in that way too, which, you know, even regardless of where Ray goes in the sequels, Dude, I find her very likable I the was whole time. Say, I mean, Daisy Ridley is such a likable person in the role. Yeah. And Ray and is very likable. That first, whatever, four minute introduction to her, no talking, yeah. just John Williams playing. I mean, gosh, yeah. how do you not find that character charming? Yeah. She's nice. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, so is Osha. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I, I found very similar. Very like, yeah. So that's a good point with the mm-hmm. Ray connection. Yeah. Um. I liked her. I like Pitt as well too. Her little hip, 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 hip sorry, hip. Um, that uh, I think that the uh, um, just they're always trying to reinvent the droid. If that makes any sense, that it's uh, and I think that uh, Pip's a good uh, addition. I really like Pip. Yeah. Somebody pointed out on our Instagram. I think Tales of the Force. Uh, Jessica, if I believe, I believe pointed out that uh, it's probably a Fallout reference. Yeah, Pip Boy. I, I think that's so fun. Yeah. Yeah, so I I really like Pip as well. I think mm-hmm. great great joy to get addition a multi tool. Yes. What a great idea! Yeah, so really neat. Yeah, and I I could. These were my favorite parts of the episode. It's just the quiet moments. Yeah, with, just getting with, to hang out with them. Yes, that I I'd watch a whole episode about that. Yeah, that's fun. Watch them fix a ship. What do you think about the similarities between? So we're talking about with like Anakin. Mm-hmm. I'm getting very specific. She's brought to the Jedi Temple yeah. around the same age, eight, eight <gasps> yeah. years old. You know, yeah. Anakin was nine, but she's eight years old. Yeah. Um, the Jedi Council doesn't want to train her because she's, she's too old. She might be too dangerous. Yeah. Um, and she has a wise Jedi Master who kind of cuts against the grain a little bit. Yeah. Who wants to train her anyway. So they yeah. begrudgingly agree. But then she finds a new path later on. And she ends up walking out. Here's, I'm sure we're far from the first people to point this out. But here's the part where I think is interesting, where it breaks. Soul, unlike Qui-Gon, is not dead True. in this character's life. And yeah. so that's always the question that people ask about Anakin is, how would have Anakin turned out? Yeah. How, how would it be if Qui-Gon would have been able to hang out yeah. with him and train You got to set this aside for this because we're going to be talking a lot about Qui-Gon Jinn today. I am. Okay. I'm here with you. You got to set the animosity aside. I'm here. For Qui-Gon Jinn. I'm here for you. <laughs> I'm here for him. I'm here for everyone. <laughs> So I just wonder if that's going to be interesting down the road because I, I mean, soul is the reason why the other Jedi and the Jedi council are mm-hmm. okay. Like he's, he's the mediator yeah. with Osha during these, this first episode. I wonder, like, I know this is like, maybe I'm reading too much into it, but like, what's his name? Soul, the son. Well, I took it also as like how our meaning of soul, maybe oh, he is okay. the soul of the council. Gotcha. Because let's be honest, we've seen already some of like the democracy and the bureaucrats like- Yes, a lot of stuff taint- already. Yep. It's tainting the Jedi council. Maybe he is the one that actually still has his soul. And maybe I'm reading too much into it, but well, that's I'm- kind of where, I mean, he's the only one that's really showing any kind of like uh, um, being human. Well, let's, I mean, get right into the, the Jedi yeah. of the High Republic. I think yeah. it's interesting to see how you could definitely see these are the same people that evolve into- the Jedi of the Republic. Because this oh, yeah. is about 80 to 90 years. They give us a, a nice uh, timeline in the mm-hmm. opening crawl, which by the way, that was cool. Yeah. And a pan down. Yep. I liked that a lot. I like a pan down. That was, that was okay. my first, as a first impression for the show, I was yeah. like, nice. Again, 
the iconography, it's the good. camera work. Yes, that I was going to say. Very good. I do like it. Yeah. So uh, I could see these guys being the same. Mm -hmm. So they're 80 to 90 years, you know, before. So it's not that far removed. They should be the same at this yeah. point. I think you're always going to have a Qui-Gon Jinn. Like there's just, you're always going to have a character like that. At least one, probably more. Yeah. More than likely. I mean, you had Count Dooku for a while. He was kind of a Qui-Gon Jinn before yeah. he turned to the dark side. Yeah. Because the Jedi pushed him away so much. Um, so it makes perfect sense that there's someone like Master Soul who is that type of character during this period in time. Um, so while I think he is, I really like him. He's my favorite part of the show right now. Yeah. Uh, I think that he's not very unique though in that. I think that there would always be, like, you could take at any point during the Jedi Order's history, there's probably going to be Qui-Gon Jinn, a some Jedi Master of, Soul. Some kind of, like, outlier. Yeah, yeah. somebody to who's more attuned to the will of the Force rather mm -hmm. than the will of the Jedi Council. I was doing some reading, granted. We haven't done a whole lot of, um, we haven't read a whole lot about the High Republic, but Pathfinder, is that what they are? Like, uh, have you heard about that? Yeah, that they, like, kind of split off okay. and they become, they just kind of, Follow the force. Yeah. Like yeah. a third faction. Yes. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's interesting. It's mm -hmm. interesting. And like you said, the bureaucracy, it's like, you could see these guys are exactly, yeah, exactly the same guys. And you yeah. know, I really thought that they, they really feel like a police force here. Oh yeah. And that's. Definitely. So to go into one of the specific characters, Yord. Yeah. Yord sucks. Well, I think he's supposed to suck, Connor. I don't know. I'm curious. I really want to know if that's the writer's intention because I really don't like this character like yeah. a lot. And. He is Mace Windu as a Jedi Knight. Like this is how Mace Windu would have acted as a Jedi Knight. Yeah. And he just feels like that annoying cop who got high on power. Mm -hmm. Like that's what this guy, uh, he just, he reads like I peaked in Jedi high school. Like this is Yord. Okay. Yeah. I can't, I can't stand this guy, mm -hmm. but I think he's also a perfect avatar for the Jedi Order as a whole, what they are during this period. And it's so easy to see how a Jedi Order who's basically a police force for the galaxy could become a galactic military force. Yeah. In the Republic era. Slide into that where you're going to be the, our generals. Now we have your army. Yeah. The, yeah. It's an easy transition. I mean, mm -hmm. they, it's not like they went from 90 years ago, they were all master souls. Yeah. You know, where Just they were a bunch all of were, humble monks. Yeah, yeah. Where they were occasionally breaking up trade disputes, you mm -hmm. know, from time to time. No, yeah. they were a galactic police force yeah. where they had bureaus everywhere yeah. where they were, you know, uh, keeping tabs and everything. I did think that was cool though. That like the look of the different Jedi yeah. from the different temples and stuff like that. It does make you wonder why they stopped doing that like a hundred years in the future. Like why, why did they suddenly all start wearing the just bland? The casual? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe something horrible is going to happen. Where they got to like, maybe they got to rebrand. Exactly. That's like an interesting so, idea. Yeah. It's like, we, we're no longer that anymore. We, we are riding do, up kind of close. Yeah. So. Do you like it? Do you not like it? The looks. The look? Yeah. I don't know because we are- It's so gaudy. I That's think my, that if we were more removed from- It's just that it's From so the close. prequels, yeah. I would be more okay with it. Um, but since we're so close, I'm like- do, 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 did we need to reinvent the wheel so much here? I, I do agree. It's way more flashy. Yeah. Now I get that that's, it, I, that's reflective of the Jedi's of, heart yeah. at the time. Mm -hmm. But again, we're getting so close to the prequel trilogy. It's like, wh why did they change? And maybe that's answered. And I'd be very curious to see yeah. that answer to that question. But yeah. um, I mean, they look all right. I, yeah. I mean, I have no. I, I didn't like qualms. the ones from the, uh, from the main Jedi temple. I liked too the right. Yes, I liked the look, the the more traditional Jedi uh, in yeah. the uh, in the marketplace. Yeah, they were yeah. definitely like they felt very formal, and they felt yes. very like uh, well, almost like a uniform yeah. rather than like you know. And again, maybe that uh, goes back to the galactic police force. Like that's exactly that's what how I was saying. It looks like authority rather than like you know we're humble monks. You know, the Jedi Knights were guardians of peace, and freedom. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting when you start connecting this to like Count Dooku and Tales of the Jedi, because that's not that long after this. No. I mean, you're talking 50 years maybe, right? Maybe maybe a little longer, maybe 60 years down the road from well, the show. Well, he's got to be getting born pretty soon. I mean- Yeah, count, yeah, yeah, that's true. he was I mean, getting up there even in uh, during the Clone Wars and yeah. Revenge of the Sith. Yeah. So in Tales of the Jedi, he's wearing not anything like that. He's wearing, well, I guess he is kind of, he's wearing- He's outfits. wearing his cape. Everything. Well, he's wearing his cape, but I mean like his, his robes are a lot more subdued. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, 
So anyway, I th- so I thought that was really interesting. And I just want to throw out that thing about Yord because down with Yord. Yeah. Thumbs down for Yord. Yeah. <laughs> he was uh, on our side at the end. I, I guess, but he still sucks. Yeah. I, I, I'm very curious to see if he'll grow on me. Yeah. But I don't know. He just. I don't know why they gave him the Killmonger haircut. Right. It's odd. Yeah. Or whatever. Weird yeah. choice, but that's fine. <laughs> so Jackie, another Jedi we meet, the Padawan. Yes. Uh, played by um, Daphne Keene. Yes. I really liked her. She was a standout for me. Uh, she mm-hmm. was kind of a sleeper hit. Yeah. I thought she was really fun. Yeah. Um, her like stick, uh, like by the books, bookworm kind of Jedi Padawan. Yeah. Uh, Very Obi-Wan-esque. I thought that too. I was like, yeah. I think this is how Obi-Wan would be as a Padawan. And mm-hmm. I thought that was really fun. Studious. Yeah. A nice foil to a master soul. Yeah. I Who's- thought- bit of a a maverick. <laughs> yeah, he's a bit of, you know, a follow the will of the force. Because mm-hmm. yeah. um, as Obi-Wan gets older, we see him butt heads a little bit with Qui-Gon. But yeah. uh, Jackie's young enough where it's kind of, it's just fun. You yeah. Know, you see a little bit it's of a smile cute. there. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I really liked her a lot. Yeah. I think that I'm going to enjoy her character. Um, she felt another kind of like almost an Obi-Wan mixed with an Ahsoka almost. It's yeah. Just a, but Ahsoka was more bullheaded, you know, she was, she wasn't so much of like the book smart thing. She was an Anakin. Yep. This definitely felt like an Obi-Wan. So mm-hmm. really, really enjoyed Jackie as a character. Yeah. Venestra. Green lady. Gotcha. Didn't like her that much. Well, I mean, I don't think you're supposed to. I don't to. think you're supposed to. Yeah, either. exactly. Yeah. Even um, though, did you know that she's the youngest Jedi Knight in history? Is that so? Yes. How old was she? She's like 16 or oh, 17. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Anakin doesn't beat her, beat that time? I mean, when he became a Jedi Knight? Yeah. I don't know. Wasn't he like eight, 18? Uh, I guess so. Yeah, yeah, when he finally becomes, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. That's cool. Yeah. She, uh, I think, is a great avatar for the Jedi bureaucracy at this point. Yes. Just this, we got to fill out paperwork and you got to go through the right channels and all yeah. this we stuff. We can't just do that. Yeah. Yeah, like. Perfect just vehicle for that uh, plot for this. Very much like you you mentioned Mace Windu earlier. I feel like this is also Mace Windu. It is that. Know? I sense a plot to destroy the Jedi. We need to discuss it over here. <laughs> yeah, they're like, <laughs> even though it's weird because I feel like Mace Windu also like is a go-getter. And I feel like... Um, this character will also be a go getter. If we, I mean, we've yeah, seen, we've the, seen the light whip. Yeah, yeah. We, oh, we've seen the light whip. So yeah, that I'm sure that that's uh, that's got to come into play later. But I thought their conversation was very telling with Master Soul about uh, being more concerned about their uh, political enemies. Yeah, and I think that's starting to sow the seeds as to what what becomes of this whole story at the end of this. Yeah. Why does Kiati Mundi in Phantom Menace? Yeah, why is he so adamant about how the Sith have not been seen for? A thousand years, a thousand yeah. generations. Whenever millennia, he says. right? Yeah, a millennia. Yeah. Well, I um, think too that, uh, I mean, I think we're getting towards, I mean, there's going to be a big cover up or something. I like think that. there's got to be a cover up. And I yeah. think or I think that and they're think, more concerned about what their political enemies are going to think yeah. about what's going on well, rather think, than informing the rest of the Jedi Council or re- informing anybody else. I don't even know if it's their political enemies. I think they're just afraid of their, uh, how their image well, yeah, but that's political, the, right? Yeah, they, but I'm talking about even just like the galaxy as a whole, like if it got out about it. The, yes, yeah. I'm sure that the political enemies could exploit yeah, they it. They sweep it under the rug. Exactly. Yeah, it's very interesting. Yeah. But I also think that they got to hide this even from the brass, you know, because yeah. I mean, Yoda can't know. No. Do you think he's going to show up? I don't know, because Leslie Headland was asked specifically about this on an interview. Yeah. If Yoda would show up and she said no. And if you read the interview, it's like, oh man, Yoda's not going to show up. But if you watch the interview, it seems very much, I believe her about as no. much as I believe Andrew Garfield was in a No Way Home. Gotcha. I now, I I just think it's kind of a no brainer, you know? I well, mean, it's weird not? that like all this could be happening under him and he's not worried about it. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I just don't know why you don't just, don't need much. Just no. give us a little, just a little glimpse, you yeah. know? That's all. Yeah. Why not, right? Yeah, exactly. Like, sue me. I'm a fan. Service me. Well, but the whole thing is, is like, it makes sense. He would be involved in this. This can't just be- If it be escalates. Like, yeah. I think it's going to. Well, but I wonder if they're the guy going to- The with a red lightsaber running around. But they're going to cover it up for sure. Oh, I just, definitely. I think that this information can't get back to Yoda. Oh, okay. It gotcha. can't. Yeah. Maybe there'll be a funeral or something like that and he'll be at it. Yeah, I yeah, think uh, that's, that's like, my thought. Is if he'll he's say in, something really like philosophical, like always two there are. A master and apprentice. That that'd be insane. If yeah, that, I doubt it. <laughs> Maybe a master souls. Master. Yeah. 
We'll see. Be crazy. What if Opo Rancisis appears? That'd be cool. Who's he? I'm <laughs> <He's> sorry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> he's the very like furry guy in the Jedi Council who has like the curly oh, fingers. Oh, who's really like he's he's lanky, right? And he's got like a big bushy. Yeah, yeah. he's the other like really old Jedi because he's also yeah. in the High Republic era. I got he's you. the other he Grand Master okay. because there's three Grand Masters at the time of the High Republic. Yeah. There's Yoda, there's Opa Rancisis, and there's one more. Right? High Republic fans, correct me if I'm wrong on that. Gotcha. Pretty sure. Okay. <laughs> and then what? You think that's Poe Kloon? Plo, 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 Plo Kloon. Sorry. In the trailer? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Looks I read, I was reading up on this because on Wikipedia, it says that he's like 300 and whatever years old. Yeah. But evidently that's in Keldor years. Oh, so it's like dog years. And so that might yeah. not be. It may not be the truth. Okay, <laughs> gotcha. So I don't know. We'll, so he just might be some random. Just might be some random. We'll find gotcha. out, I guess. Okay. Um, huh. Yeah. Gotcha. Because Leslie said nobody we know is going to appear. So. But you said it within everyone's age. Like, I mean, like, as we just said, like, Count Dooku's going to be born here pretty soon. That's what I was like. It's a weird time period to tell this story. Like, that, that's what we've been saying forever. It's yeah. like, you got to address a couple things or butt up against some stuff. I don't know. It's just, it's a weird time to tell the story. It's true. And I wonder, so, with looking at everything, do you think they're reinventing the wheel? I know that she says that she's included some stuff from- uh, you. Yeah, from the EU and Legends and stuff like that. But I'm like... What do you mean? From like the Sith stuff? Like Plagueis? Yeah, like, like so, that? yeah it, well, like even at like Tenebris or Plagueis or any of that. Are we going to know about I think, that? I think we're, that she's... If I had to read the tea leaves, I think we're likely seeing... I, I would say she's probably taking like an heir to the Empire approach. Or she's reinventing pulling, it. Yeah. Pulling some stuff. Yeah. It's going to have like a light parallel connection. Okay. I was just curious with what you, I mean, you're, uh, I think that you think it's going to happen more than I do. I think that there is just, you are in extremely dangerous territory when you're messing with Plagueis. Tenebris, yeah. I think there's a lot more play. Yeah. Like you can, I think that if you wanted to make May, if she ends up being a big Sith Lord by the end of this or whatever, yeah, she could be Plagueis' master and get away with it. Yeah. Like you could, you could get away Barely. with that Again, story. You're getting pretty close. Yeah. You're to getting it. close. Yeah. But like at the end of this, if you want to do a small time jump and then she goes and recruits Plagueis. Yeah. I think that that's fine. Finds possible. a holocron. Sure. Hey, I need to recruit you to the Sith initiative. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Something like that yeah. could happen. Mm -hmm. Um, But I don't think that you can mess with Plagueis. I think that you would make a lot of people upset with that. Yeah. Because I mean, even the stuff that they have decanonized, the stuff. They wouldn't mess with Thrawn and they really haven't. Now there yeah. are some Thrawn diehards who like, I don't really like how they've reintroduced him, but he's pretty much the same. He's, he's very mean, similar. I was going to say, it's not that different. You may argue yeah. that his intellect isn't as high as it is in the book. And okay, that's fine. But like, it's, he's very much the same character. <laughs> Although at, we haven't seen him in yet. His bones. At that time. Yeah. That I was yeah. going to say, we've just seen younger him. Just, so just maybe, snippets. Exactly. So maybe he's growing into that master tactician. Yeah. Yeah. So we might, and, and things like, uh, like Revan, they've, they've re made passing references to be like, Hey, he's, he's here, you know, we'll get there eventually or Darth Bane, you know? Yeah. So I just think there's no way you mess with Plagueis. Yeah. I don't know. I could be wrong. I could be, I could be huffing the copium right now, but, and to be real too, I don't think that he's going to be, I don't think the next episode is going to come around and tooth guy is going to rip off the mask and be like, it's me, Darth Plagueis. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah. But uh, maybe by the end of the show, there's some reference to Damask Holdings or something, you know, yeah. just to just to sow those seeds. Yeah, that's all. Yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> what do you think? I don't know. Like, and I know you're going to be like Seth. You are out of your mind. I kind of want, and I don't even know how you'd pull this off. That Soul is somehow Tooth Guy. That it's some sort of like that, yeah. <laughs> that like that, that. There's some duality between the two, where he's been training both of the, uh, hmm. where he's been training on the light and the dark. Or that'd something be like wild. That. I don't know how you would do that, but I just was like, man, that would be crazy. Like I don't even know how that they would do that. That like uh, that'd be crazy. Yeah, I know that it's not going to be, but that'd be a lot it's of fun, fun idea though. Yeah, of like a Jedi who's living a double life like that. Basically, yeah. You're not. That's interesting because. Count Dooku leaves the order before he turns. Yes. Anakin turns well, before, you know. Yeah, it's a very Palpatine thing where he's living a double life. That yeah. he's living life as, you know, the the leader of the well, CIS, but then also the leader of the Republic. So every Sith has that, right? Like you have Higo Damask, Rujas mm -hmm. Nome, right? And Tenebris, yeah. you have Palpatine, um, yeah. Darth Sheath. Sidious. Yeah. 
It'd be interesting if a Sith's double life was a Jedi. Exactly. That'd be kind of cool. Is that, well, is that a Legends thing? Is that in Legends at all? Uh, not that I know of. I don't be, really know. Yeah. But I I just was like, how how can I make this more interesting? I'm like, they wouldn't see this coming. <laughs> <laughs> but, and I mean, I don't know. I, who knows? Maybe they're not in the same place at the same time. But like the trailers kind of make it look like they are in the same place at the same time. But maybe yeah. not. Yeah. Yeah. So, um. Dude, that's so tricky with me. Also, with you're talking about like bringing in Legends characters, because I've been championing the idea that like, guys, let's just not get our hopes up. I know, but yeah. Let's let's just not. But at the same time, like where there's smoke, there's fire. Like people have talked about Revan a lot lately, and I, I don't really care. Like that may, uh, may like people say that May looks like a samurai, like in her garb. I think she looks like Revan. I know I've been saying that, but like her armor, like I think you don't it looks, think she is Revan. Do you? No, no, not at all. No, I just think say. that she just <laughs> looks like that. That style of armor looks like how his armor looks. That it's just too close. You don't think that's it's just a visual callback? That's what I'm saying. That I'm like, is that a callback to that? We're gonna see a holocron, and then we'll see. You know that that's the stinger for the end of it. Is that like, oh. They found Revan's holocron, and he's going to be the one to like set everything up, basically, or his teachings will be the one to set everything up. So, I don't know. I don't. I don't really want it. I would like them to kind of tell their own story and not use um, the legend Sith Lords as like a crutch, basically. Yeah. But at the same time, I don't think if it's it, wrong as a fan to want them to connect to these stories because for a yeah. lot of fans they grew up with those stories oh yeah yeah and i didn't personally so i can't like i didn't play those games but i know a lot of people did mm -hmm. like a lot of people have connections to thrawn and thing and they have done that and so why why not also connect those stories that people loved yeah and i don't see i think it's just the discourse around fan service has gotten so annoying it's true <laughs> it's like some of it's fine. Some of yeah. it's okay. And not all of it is fan service. Yeah. Like if a Revan appeared, I wouldn't consider that to be fan service. No, I'd be like, I okay. It, I mean, it, it could be. Well, but, but I mean, it's servicing the plot. It could service the plot. Sure. It, more than likely. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. It, especially if it's just because I'm not expecting to see Revan alive, mind you. I'm just yeah. expecting to see a recording or something like sure, that. Sure, sure. Something yes. like that. Like just yeah. to kind of a reference. Yes. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I'm with you with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. So. The only Jedi we really didn't talk about before we move on is, of course, Jedi Master Soul. We've talked about him a little bit, yeah. but just to really hammer that home. Oh boy. Qui-Gon 2.0, man. Yes. He's great. I I thought from the trailers that he'd be my favorite character, and I, yeah. he is. He's great. I do like how kind he is and mm -hmm. like how you can just really see that like in the performance and everything. It was just like there, there's some gravity to the situation that's gone on, and this, is, this guy has been affected. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah. Good dude. Like mm -hmm. him a lot. Yeah. So, shifting gears a little bit. Yeah. So, a lot of questions get kind of answered as we go, like about- It's odd. Yeah. yeah so- It's super odd. Oh, sure. She has a twin. Oh, she has a twin. Okay. Okay. Oh, the, oh uh, we, they've met now. <laughs> yeah, now they've <laughs> like, met. Oh, the, the, now there's no more mystery. Yeah. May is dead. May thinks Osha is dead. Now they know each other. Oh, they're alive. But there yeah. is one giant mystery hanging sort of still out there. Yeah. And that's this burning of Brendock. Yeah. May and Osha's home world. Yeah. There's been a fire. We know. So here's what we know. Okay. We know that May started the fire, yeah. allegedly. She started the fire. There were four Jedi that were stationed on this planet. Jedi Master Indara from the beginning. Jedi Master Sol. Jedi Master. Well, I don't know if they're all masters to be clear, I guess. Yeah. So I'll just call them Jedi. Yeah. Um, Kelnaka, the Wookiee. Yep. And Torben. All of these characters were stationed on Brindock during this time. Mm -hmm. And this fire consumed all of May and Osha's family to the point where May was presumed dead. Osha was the only one who made it out. Master Soul takes Osha to the Jedi Temple. She is then trained. Yep. Other things we know. Something happened with Master Torben to make him feel an immense amount of guilt to take the Barash vow, which I hope I'm saying that right. I feel like I'm butchering that. Yeah. Um, a vow of silence almost. A vow of silence. Yeah. Hasn't spoken in 10 years. Yes. Yeah. Um, Kalnaka has secluded himself out on another planet out in the woods. Mm -hmm. um, Torben carries a lot, or not Torben, excuse me, Sol carries a lot of guilt. Yeah. Um, for what happened. So much that he's even carrying around a little... Uh, 
you know, a little puck. Yeah, a little puck with with its former Padawans on it and stuff like that. Yes. Yeah. And Andara seems to be the we don't get much with her, so we don't know what yeah. her deal is. But I mean, she's definitely not uh, hanging out with scum and villainy. That's not interesting. Being right? a Jedi. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And she seems kind of unbothered when she noticed, or rather unkind, yes. when she notices May. Yep. Um. So. This is a big mystery. What happened on Brindock? Yeah. To cause and this I, rift. I imagine that's the big mystery going forward. Yes, I yeah. think so too. Mm -hmm. And a couple of things, a couple more breadcrumbs that I, I wrote down to pick up on. Um, so May's confrontation with Endara in the very first moments of the show. Yeah. She says, Jedi don't, or Endara says, Jedi don't attack unarmed people. Yes, you do. Yep. And then they fight. Mm -hmm. hmm, there's a lot of weight behind there is. her line when she says that. Yeah. And that does cause them to fight. And that they know each other too. And that there's yes. some sort of... So yeah. Indara and the Jedi did attack unarmed people or yep. according to May or from her pers pers yeah. perspective. More than did. likely her family. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and Soul supposedly witnessed May's death. That's also yeah. interesting. Like how would he... That's an odd detail when she clearly doesn't die, right? Yeah. And so did Osha. She yeah. also thinks that she's dead. She, May also has a weird tattoo, right? A, quarter, a sort of like circular tattoo on her forehead. Seems very witchy. And we Does know she? From, mm -hmm. I didn't notice that. Yeah, when she's like, uh, I forget at what, what point. Really? Um, mm -hmm. I assumed that the arm tattoo was going to be the thing to tell the twins apart at some point. Oh, I thought it was just the hair. One of them's got longer hair. Oh, I figured that, that was going to be like <laughs> They wear something. different clothes. They do, but I figured at some point <laughs> yeah. that that was going to be what was going to have to be the thing to tell them apart. Yeah. I'm sure there'll be a few things, a few, few indicators. You know, one twin might have a, fun, fun with twins. One might have a red lightsaber at one point. Maybe. Yeah. Got to earn one first. Yeah, clearly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I want to know why they thought she was dead and why may then thinks osha was dead yeah that's very interesting and so my th th brief theory here is that may did die in okay. that this witch brings her back yeah and so i'm going to give a little bit of a light spoiler warning because i uh it's in the trailer but yeah i'm annoyed with the trailers for spoiling everything but light spoiler warning just um skip ahead a little bit if you want to avoid this the witch in the trailer, her last name is the same last name. As, I forget. It's like an Anasea or something like that. Mm -hmm. She shares a last name with May and Osha. I think that that is their mother. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Look at you. Uh, wow. My theory is that this witch brings um, her back. And so we see also in this trailer, this witch causes some sort of possession with Torben. Yeah. Their eyes turn black. And yeah. Torben in the present time has a scar. So Kelnaka maybe and Torben get into some sort of scuffle. scuffle. He scratches his eye out and Torben does something unthinkable while under possession, maybe causes May to start the fire. Yeah. And that's what ever that's what causes all of this guilt. Mm -hmm. But I think this this witch is very pivotal here. And maybe May does die. And maybe the witch back. is that brings her back. Interesting. Witches in Star Wars are known to do a little bit of necromancy. It's true. That's for sure. Yeah. And maybe this witch is Toothy Mask guy. Maybe, maybe that's her. Yes. Maybe they're the same character. That is I interesting. Yeah. But I do think that all of those are definitely connected. And yeah. it is a little frustrating when you go watch that trailer again, because it's like, oh, you all revealed a lot there, huh? Yeah. So end of spoiler section, even though it's in the trailer, it's just. <laughs> yeah. No, I got you. So, hmm. But speaking of Toothy Mask Guy, we get a little bit of him. Just Barely. A, just, a, just a skosh. Just, just a, a little. It's a little appetizer. Barely. Yeah. Yeah. So. The Acolyte, the Master, and the Ritual. Mm -hmm. This is interesting. This is the most intriguing part to, to me yeah. as far as these first two episodes. So May has like a ritual with both when she confronts Indara and Torben. Yeah. Where- She has to say the line. Attack me with all of your strength. Yeah. And it's clear that she doesn't even believe what she's saying. Nope. She's just going through the, the motions of it. And so here's what Toothy Mask Guy, which I need to stop calling him that because it's like so, so lame. <laughs> uh, the Master- is what he's called. Oh, is that what he's called? That's what uh, Kamir and uh, what uh, May, May call call him. Gotcha. So the master says in that scene where she's on the beach, the Jedi live in a dream, a dream they believe everyone shares. If you attack a Jedi with a weapon, you will fail. 
Steel or laser are no threat to them, but an acolyte. An acolyte kills without a weapon. An acolyte kills the dream. Your weapons. You will not need them. Yeah, what an interesting twist on that. Well, right? isn't that weird? Interesting, yeah, right? Yeah, and that's a Jedi thing. I'm Almost very... as if he might be a Jedi. Mm. Master Soul. Hey, Master Soul. <laughs> <laughs> that is wild though, right? Like, why, yeah. does, why is it so important that she doesn't have a weapon? Yeah. I mean, in the comics, Vader had to go earn his lightsaber, his red one. Maybe she's earning. I get that she's earning, probably earning her weapons. Yeah. But also at the same time, I think it's interesting that the Jedi for thousands of years have trained against a certain type of Sith, ones that were very, they were warriors. Yeah. But as we know from Palpatine, these are different types of Sith yes. that we're dealing with. They are more cunning. They deal with well, they, mind games and all this stuff. They attack stuff. your heart. And yeah. that's how she defeats Indara. She clearly is not a physical match for Indara. No. But what she does, she attacks her with her kindness. She uses her compassion against yeah. her. And that's how she's able to land a hit killing blow. Mm -hmm. Same thing with Torben. Yeah. Uses his compassion against him to make him kill himself. Yeah. Which, can I talk about that for a second? Of like, course. You, you brought up Dragon Ball Z a second ago. But like <laughs> the, uh, him floating in meditation, just like that's straight out of Dragon Ball Z. Yeah. And this, like her trying to fight him just felt very much like Gindi. Clone yeah, Wars. Gindy Tarkovsky. Yeah, yeah. Gindy Clone Wars. I, I loved just, that scene. Yeah, I did. I, that was one of my favorite parts. I just was like, that's really cool. I like that. Just that like, uh, you know, just um, that what a Jedi thing is showing strength without showing strength. Yeah. Does that make sense? That Yeah, just this impenetrable shield. Exactly. Yeah, around yourself. But how do you, uh, how do you penetrate the shield? They have to penetrate their own shield. Yeah, she gets... Yeah. You yeah, and you attack his heart. I was about to say, <laughs> you must attack his heart. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. So I think that that's incredibly interesting. She clearly mm -hmm. does need to take a, a lightsaber from a living Jedi. Yes. Uh, because she, they made a point to show you the lightsaber, Indara's lightsaber on the ground that she doesn't take, even she though she tries. She took her knife back. Yeah. She tries to take both Soul and Indara's lightsaber yes. while they're fighting. Mm-hmm. Um, Maybe the kyber crystal would re reject her or something like that. Yeah, or it's part of the ritual in some way. Yeah. So I think, so she needs to kill a Jedi without a weapon, and then yeah. she needs to take the weapon from a Jedi. And she's kind That's, of doing, she's kind of cheating. Well, she's failed twice. Yes. So I think she needs to succeed at least one time, so she has two other opportunities to succeed. Yeah. With who's Kalnaka going, and with Sol. Who's going down? Yeah, I'm I'm worried about our boy Kilnaka. We've not even really met him yet, but uh, that's I probably think, a problem. I so think he's going. One, I think he's he's out. The one to go. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. gotcha. I mean, Soul's a main character. Although I think he's probably going to go too. Yeah, when it's um, all said and done. Yeah, yeah. Realize his mistakes. Get stabbed by a double blade lightsaber. Could be. <laughs> that's what she's going to do. Yeah. Boom. Exactly. Train the girl. <laughs> <laughs> Train the girl. <laughs> so the last character, the master. Mm -hmm. So. Well, in this little like uh, little group, this little band of uh, of Sith, we have Kamir. Yeah, right. <laughs> you got some thoughts on Kamir? I don't know. You were talking about how you don't like the one Jedi. I didn't like this guy at all. Yeah, I just did. You like him? I'll give my thoughts in a second. What do okay. you think? I just think it's really weird that like the idea of the Sith having like a network mm -hmm. of little cronies, because like or dark Jedi or whatever you would say, because like. How did Palpatine, like, how'd they survive? How did, like, granted, I'm going off, like, the books. How did Plagueis survive? How did uh, Tenor, how'd the whole Bane line survive? They didn't talk about it. They kept to themselves, and they figured out, they orchestrated this whole plan all shrouded in darkness. The homeboy is out here crushing up leaves and quoting the Sith Code, and then what happens? The Jedi apply a little bit of pressure and he caves. All right, fine, I'm done. Yeah, then it's like, what? what I, what, like, did that rub you the wrong way? It rubbed me the wrong way. Just from what, and again, maybe the reinventing the wheel. But just, I'm like, how does this last, you know, generations since Darth Bane, if you've got just all these disciples or acolytes or whatever you want to call them running around, where like, doesn't take much and they're just going to, Spill the beans. Can I blow your mind? Sure. I blow think, it. I think Kamir is toothy Sith guy. You think so? I think he's either the master. Mm -hmm. And I think the master is actually the apprentice. I think that he is a Sith. I think that Kamir is absolutely a Sith one way or the other. Two reasons. So that's because he quotes the code. He quotes the code. Okay. He, right. he makes the poison. And yeah. did you notice when May confronts him, 
she, he overpowers her instantly. Instantly. Oh, when he just walks right up to her and everything? When, she, minute, com- when she comes back later and they're in the, uh, they're in that like little uh, alleyway. Yes. And she like bring the knife up to him. Oh, she's yes. like, yeah, you sold me out. And yeah. he overpowers her instantly. Yeah. Instantly. We just saw her go toe to toe with Master Soul. Yeah. And Master Indara earlier in the first yeah. episode. Not a problem for Kamir. Interesting. And he's like, he's, there's something to this guy. So I think he is either Toothy Sith guy who, he, they're referring to the master. So I think that there's, there's layers here. I think the master is either. So we have, let's, let's establish terms. We have yeah. Toothy Sith guy. Yeah. I'm just going to keep calling him that. Yeah. The master, those could be the same person. Yeah. Kamir, all three of these people could be the same. He yeah. could be referring to himself in the third person. Yeah. Maybe, and May doesn't know that. I don't hate that. I like that. Did you come up with that on your own? I thought that. I was actually talking with Matt from Star Wars Time Show. He thought the same thing. Interesting. Okay. Um, I like that. So I, mm-hmm. when I was watching it, as so I, I write just, yeah, just I, my, my stream of consciousness write, while I'm writing. It, yeah, I write the exact same way while I'm as, watching it. As soon as he said the Sith code, I was like, this guy, yeah, I think this guy is, well, I maybe think this guy's a Sith. Then there you go. Maybe that's, that fixes my problem because again, I just was like, this is so stupid that just some, some grunt would be able to know the Sith code. Well, the way it reminded me, um, was I'm a big fan of Assassin's Creed and I think the Sith remind me a little bit of assassins mm-hmm. from that game so the assassins are a faction grayson from mortis fm him and i are talking about this uh and they are very they're a secret of order like yeah. the, like the sith and um they do have their they team up with other factions mm-hmm. but it's all like mutually beneficial and they keep things secret yeah so i viewed it if this guy is just kamir and he's just this apothecary i could i, I don't have a problem with that because i could see a sith dealing with people on a very case by case basis like yeah. that because i mean palpatine does this in the plagueis book now it was a big deal when he did this but yeah. it was to newt gunray mm-hmm. with the trade federation he yeah. reveals himself as a sith yeah now newt gunray is not exactly like he's not someone i would trust like that right no. but he makes but, a calculated effort yeah but the whole thing is is like um I, I think it was again just the whole like being willing to work with the jedi right then and there as opposed to, you know, like, oh, okay. Granted, all he did but was he just an sold. Angle. I mean, all he did is he just sold her out. He didn't, yeah. he was like, can I go free? Yeah. But if this they? is, if this really is him, the master, yeah, he's testing her. Exactly. Right. And what a way to keep uh, everybody off his trail. Yeah. And yeah. if, and again, if this is the Sith, if he is toothy Sith guy, yeah, then that kind of reminds me of scenes from the Plagueis book where he was just chilling with the Jedi masters. Oh yeah. Where he was talking with them and everything and seeing yeah. how well he could uh, hide himself. Now I think that the master is likely the apprentice. I think that there's someone above him. I think that the, the two of Sith guy is just a face. I think that he's the apprentice. Yeah. And that this is a Count Dooku, Asajj Ventress type relationship. Gotcha. Like where, an acolyte for the dark side. But yeah, like, yeah. And we're going to turn on our master by the end of it. And that's yeah. exciting because it's like, now are we dealing with a Plagueis? Are we dealing with a Tenebris? Yeah. That's kind of fun. And if it is, what's really fun if, from this angle is if this is like a Tenebris, because we knew that Tenebris took a, a bunch of like smaller apprentices other than Plagueis. Yeah. Maybe this is one that failed, you know, before he's, and maybe by the end of all of this, Tenebris decides like, okay, you know, time to go find a new apprentice. Yeah. And that leads us into Plagueis and that would be really interesting. Yeah. But regardless of any of those connections, I think Kamir definitely i think he's a no i'm i'm with you he's got no, the that makes me feel a little bit better i'm surprised you didn't think about that i just like i think he just annoyed me <laughs> that uh i just was like what is going on no i just didn't really think about that he's <laughs> too he's too casual it's true that's what he feels very mcu-y really if that makes you sense think so you don't think so no i thought he I... just how he's like you know just very fast talking making stuff you know i shouldn't be doing this for you and everything like that and again maybe that's that he's, you know, living his double life or whatever. He actually reminded me of what I would think of a younger Palpatine might be if if I hadn't read the Plagueis book, because I know that Palpatine is, is, a, is a royal, you know. Yeah. But notice like there's just subtle demeanor changes when he does things. Like he wakes up, he's like, ah, you know, uh, yeah, I just took this off the guy. Like, did he kill the guy who yeah. ran that shop? Who knows, right? Yeah. And then- then he just starts making poison and starts talking about the Sith code. Just it's like a just going right from hey yeah. May, what's up? Let me crack my neck and you know like yeah. ah, I just had woke up from a nap. Flip a switch. Yeah, but it's evil. just right in there to yeah. that just wickedness. Mm-hmm. And it's a nice contrast to May because this is 
a soft criticism I have for this show. I say soft because it may not really be a criticism when it's all said and done, but yeah. May does not strike me as evil at all. No, not at all. Both of them seem like, you know. They're like doe-eyed and like, yes, they're the, just. I, well, I feel like that both her and Osha like are just kind of like parts of a whole. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. So yeah, that's where I'm at. So yeah. speak, you kind of, great segue. Yeah. The other big theory from this mm -hmm. is I think, I mean, May and Osha are a dyad. They gotta be, right? You think so? This a close- dyad in the force. This close to your favorite movie? And close close to Tross? Exactly. How long? Okay, let's do the math. So we got yeah. 90 years until the, the rise of the empire. So that's yes. Revenge of the Sith. Mm -hmm. And then from Revenge of the Sith, you have- it's About 20, 20 years. years. to the Battle of Yavin. And about, and about six years for that. And then so 30, uh, 30 years until- TFA. Yeah. There's only a year there. So we're looking like 60 ish years. Yeah. Right. So 60, 150 ish years. Yeah. After this is another dyad. Yeah. It is a little close. Palpatine made it seem like it was a very rare thing. So I have, I have his quote here. Okay. Um, the life force of your bond, a dyad in the force, a power like life itself, unseen for generations. I guess that would be long enough to be a couple generations. Couple generations. Yeah. I mean, that's still rare, right? Yeah. Um, I do wonder if this is a. Uh, and it's a not false... like they'd find every dyad. That's true too. Yeah. I wonder if this is a false dyad too. Not, not like it was manufactured. Oh, interesting. Like, so here's my here's my big harebrain theory because gotcha. I know I've seen some other people talk about the dyad thing. Yeah. I think Osha and May were one one entity and that got, were cleaved in two. They got split. Do you think the Jedi did that? I don't know. Yeah. I no. I think that. I they think were this separate witch, as well, but that's the whole like, oh, I saw this person die. I saw this person die. Yeah. That's that what I'm wild? saying. Yeah. yeah like, so maybe it happened then. That's what I'm saying. Is oh, like, yeah. so maybe it happened during the fire is yeah, what you're saying. Exactly. That's they interesting. split and it's like, oh no, only but one. Then why lit. do they have two names? I don't know. Yeah. yeah. I, so wherever it happens, I, I think yeah, it does happen. I don't know. I'm just kind of like. No, it's, fun. I, it's a great idea. It's yeah, a great train of thought. It's like theory craft in here. Yeah. I think that, uh. So here's my big here's my big theory on like the the burning of Brindock when and how it connects to the dyad. Mm -hmm. So first of all, they have a vision like a Force Skype vision, kind of similar to Ray and Kylo. Yeah, right? it's true, and it's very Last Jedi because like it's uh, very similar. Well, I mean the the running through the snow, they're not making any footprints. Yeah, it's very similar. Yeah, but May is not aware of Osha by the time they meet. So May is not the one who conjured that vision in Osha's mind. It's true. Who conjured that vision? Was it just Osha's unconsciousness or toothy Sith guy? Yeah. Or this witch? Are they yeah. one and the same person? There's a lot of these kind of forces that are unseen. Mm -hmm. Now we haven't met the witch yet. And is so, the witch even still alive yet? And is yeah. the witch, did the witch die during this Brindock thing? So she yep. could be a complete red herring. I don't yep. know. But somebody caused that vision to happen twice. Yeah. The second time is interesting because the second time leads her into the room where uh, the, the master is there and or master Torben. Mm -hmm. And that would, th that I think was designed to cause provocation with the Jedi had Yord, his only redeeming moment, in my opinion, in these first two episodes. <laughs> not walked in with him. Not walked in with them. They yeah. would have blamed yeah. Osha. Yeah. So- was this one of these dark forces sort of trying to stoke this fire within Osha? Like, yeah. hey, trying to keep, well, like, like May, they want another one of this. So Yeah, and then too, that like, we already know, like, May can use the force. Osha maybe can, at one point could use the force. Yeah, she couldn't call Pip to her. Yeah. Yeah. So, I don't know, maybe she severed herself from the force. Yeah. And so that's the problem is that she, you know, that it's the force is trying to uh, get its claw its way back into her. It's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I think that, so then I think if they are a dyad, they are manufactured, I think you have to ask yourself why. And so whoever created her, let's just go with Toothy Sith guy for a second. Yeah. He created this dyad for the Sith, right? Because like Palpatine, a power like life itself, it's a very big deal. Right, yeah. like to siphon, like to siphon that life for yourself. Yeah, um, that would be very in line with the Bane line, trying to do these experiments and stuff. That would be a very tenebrous, a very plagueous thing to do to create something yeah. like this. Mm -hmm. um, create like a super being. Like, imagine if the dyad was a concept that existed when the Plagueis book was written. I could almost see that being involved in some way, like yeah. as one of their experiments that they were trying to create a dyad. So then you have to ask yourself, why were four Jedi stationed on Brendok? Maybe they knew about this dyad, and the horrible thing that the Jedi had to do that made them so guilty 
is they the only way they could defeat this dyad was they decided we have to kill one of them. We have to remove one. We have to kill one of these children. Yeah. And that was the evil thing that the Jedi had to do. Mm -hmm. Just a theory. I'm, it's a very dark theory, but this is a very dark, I think we're heading in dark directions. I'm wondering too, with like you were talking about possession and stuff like that. And it's like, well, what if uh, that while possessed, that it was part of some sort of ritual or whatever that they had to cut down. That it wasn't mm -hmm. the Jedi didn't do it on purpose. That oh. Jedi had to cut down one while being like, possessed. Like kind of a blood ritual type yes, thing. Yes, exactly. Interesting. That sort yeah. of thing. Yeah, very Timbal of Doomy where they can't control themselves. I think it's there's something yeah. there because one of them starts the fire. Yeah. But also they both think the other is dead and there's, so, there's something to all of those pieces, right? I'm wondering too that when they say my family... What if it's like a coven? Like it's not like a oh. intermediate family that are like, oh. what if May started the fire to stop the situation, to stop the ritual? To so stop May was the good person. Maybe, yeah. That's interesting. I wonder, yeah. I'm, I'm almost wondering. There's my, there you go. Yeah. There's, like, there, there's me reading between the lines. Because again, you, when you think family, you think like immediate family. But like, what if it's much bigger than that? That like the Jedi. And what if May caught wind of like one of them needs to go yeah. in order to save the other? Mm -hmm. A very like, I mean. Sacrifice. Dyad yeah. thing, right? Mm -hmm. Like Kylo gives his life for Rey. Yeah. Like if their life forces are tied together. Yeah. She decides to go. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I was May thinking even to try to, herself. yeah, to try to stop the ritual basically. It's yeah. like, I will start the fire. Well, yeah, yeah. but that's what I'm saying. Like she mm -hmm. does that, but then also decides yeah. to take herself out with it yeah. to save her sister. Yeah. Maybe even, maybe she even, maybe Soul even knows about that. Yeah. Maybe they, that's all part of this deal. And what if it's, uh, he saw May die from a certain point of view. Oh, I mean that like, yeah. you know, it's more Jedi like. He does flip very quickly because he tells, mm -hmm. he tells Yord and, and Jackie that no, he no, saw her die. Yeah, that she's not alive anymore or and, that he, he saw uh, he saw her die. And then he tells Osha like, ah, I believe you. Yeah. It's like, brother, yeah, you just a minute ago. That's what I'm saying is yeah. I'm just like, uh, you know, from a certain point of view. It's very interesting. It's yeah. like, there's a lot to that. Mm -hmm. There's a lot to that. Yeah. Um, But I just think that if it is a dyad situation, I think the Sith were behind creating this and the Jedi had to stop it and they had to do something evil to stop it. And that's why they're yeah. so riddled with guilt. Mm -hmm. um, and that's going to be the secret behind this. Because uh, like, let me read the uh, the poem here too. This is another piece of this. Yeah. Because this was another thing with that vision that was mm -hmm. another kind of standout moment. You're You're with me and I'm with you, always one, but born as two. I didn't even make that connection until just when you now. read it. When you read it to me the first time off this, I'm like, yeah, it is a dyad. Then I guess that makes sense. Well, I made the dyad connection, but not like the cleaved from two thing. Like I didn't yeah. even think about that. Yeah. Always one, but born. Okay. So, but born as two. So that's interesting. Again, I'm thinking that they're two halves, like a prime, like the prime Jedi symbol on uh, Octo. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That like, they're kind of two pieces of a coin somehow. As above sits the stars and below lies the sea. I give you, you, and you give me me. So... And I'm wondering too that like is that the sacrificing themselves with the fire and stuff like that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now here's in contrast to what Kylo Ren says to Rey. Yeah. The life for or excuse me, that's Palpatine's. What Palpatine doesn't know is that we're a dyad in the Force, Rey. Two that are one, always one, but born as two. Going back to Maze Line, yeah. it's the same dialogue. Mm -hmm. It's going right back to it, and I think that. Who would have thought, man? It's like it all, all roads lead to Rise of Skywalker <laughs> exactly. at this point. Hey, <laughs> it's it's wild. Like, all roads Bad lead to Batch, trust. Yeah, Mandalorian. Yeah, the Acolyte. Who knew? Who would have thunk it? I certainly didn't. Yeah. Um, but hey, of all the concepts though, from Trost to explore, yeah, this is one that I'm game with. Like yeah. this is a fun. This is a fun idea. Mm -hmm. uh, well, yeah, I think that there was here. so much left on the table with it, where it's like you, you could have some fun with this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a fun idea, man. Mm -hmm. It's like cool yeah it's cool i'm really down so yeah do you, what do you think you're down with the dyad it's interesting that's for sure i uh i want to see how it all plays out i hope that it's a little bit more creative like what we just kind of theory crafted yeah like it the, probably won't be but and yeah that's I was not that say, we're better than the writers or anything no, it's just I'm not, i it's uh, just always as in your your own mind it's always, always is, grander in your head that's yes, the whole yes. thing and sometimes to the, the fans detriment simpler is better yes at, for storytelling it just is. I think the biggest thing to pull from this maybe is what makes them important is that I think that the Sith want 
Osha and May to come back together yeah. in some way. And maybe they'll flip. Maybe May becomes the good guy and Osha becomes bad. Yeah. Um, Which again, they both seem so like in that. between that yeah. I'm like, I could easily see them flipping. I just think there's something, there's something to all of that. Yeah. That we're going to, and that that's the intrigue for me for the show right now. Mm-hmm. I think that I think that's why they revealed the the twin twist right away. Is yeah. that like, hey, we're gonna get this out of the way because this isn't the sauce. Yeah. The sauce is coming, mm-hmm. you know. <laughs> so really cool stuff. Yeah. Um, so last point, this is actually a bit of a talking about yins and yangs. This is a bit of a bit of a two sides to a coin thing. It's a little yeah. lighter, you know, to kind of wind us into the fan questions. Yeah. The Star Wars high, you know? Uh you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Like when you're watching when you watch a new, when you're watching old Star Wars, new Star Wars, there's moments where it's like, yeah, I'm watching Star Wars right now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. It's like those, the what? Millennium Falcon takes off. You know, yeah. it's, it's that scene from The Force Awakens. The garbage the, will the do. The garbage the, will do. Exactly. Da, 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 Yeah. This is good stuff. It's, it's, yeah. um, it's Luke catching the lightsaber in uh, Return of the Jedi. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. It's, the, yes. it's Anakin Skywalker uh, in, in Obi-Wan with, in the beginning of, uh, of uh revenge of the sip yeah it's like they're the force is with you young skywalker but you are not a jedi that's yet. that's the tippy top <laughs> of, well of you hadn't it. mentioned it yet so that's, i was just the, gonna say that like, there's a million i mean of course when you look in george's work it's all that because yeah. i mean that is star wars right yeah. and not to say the stuff isn't star wars but you're always gonna be chasing that yeah when that high where it's like oh my gosh this feels like i'm watching it for the first time again yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. you're gonna be chasing that feeling and yeah. it's so hard it's so subjective right for everybody yeah. it's different um and for some of these shows, it's kind of fun because like, I think Mandalorian has a lot of this, yeah. a lot of those moments. Um, and I think that Kenobi for me had a lot of these moments and or for me, had very few of these moments. Yeah. So this show, I yeah. wrote down some. Uh, so here's some moments that kind of gave me like, oh yeah. Like, yeah. E- e- not even ones that I was like pumping my fist, but just like little, like little flutters of like, yeah, yeah this is, this is Star Wars, right? Yeah. The pan down in the beginning. Yeah. Small thing, but it's Good. just right from the crawl. Yeah. I, I said it out loud. We were like, oh, like, oh, there's a crawl. That's cool. And then whew, it's like a pan down. Yeah. Heck yeah. With, and then the wipes, the PowerPoint wipes, yeah. right? May, may I interject with one? No, I'm going to keep going. No, okay. Of course. Let's go. I, uh, my wife and I were watching it and w- the second episode's winding down and the two guys are talking. And I just look at her and I'm like, I am. Um, they're speaking Hatties. And she's like, how do you know that? And I'm like, the dialect, I can tell. And then like, <laughs> and just with, I'm like, they sound like Greedo talking. Mm-hmm. And uh, later in the subtitles, it says saying something in Tatis as they ran <laughs> off away from him. And I was just like, it's good to be right. <laughs> like, like it just, but that felt very Star Wars. It sounded like yeah. Star Wars. Yeah. So that's actually one of mine. Kelnaka, yeah. that whole last scene. Yeah. With the Wookiee Jedi mm-hmm. and the whole, the whole vibe. Yeah. Like that was another moment. I was like, yeah. 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 Um, Master Soul and the Younglings. Mm-hmm. Like, that's good. I mean, dude, that's Star Wars Lessons 101 right there, what he's great. talking about. Yeah. And I also loved the uh, the little bait and switch with Icy Fire. Yeah. And you think that he's going to say something and then he's like, yeah, no, it's like, yeah, it's part the of it. Force is like fire. Yeah. yeah. It's mm-hmm. like, yeah, it's it's very powerful. Yeah. And yeah, it's, you have to be fire, careful. Raging Ocean. Yeah. That was a great moment. And that was actually a moment that I thought was a great subversion by the trailer because I think you're led to believe that that's like young May. Yeah. Right. And it's not, Mm-mm. it's just, uh, yeah, it's just a nice little moment. I just yeah. thought that was really cool. And, uh, the master, I thought that scene where she walks out into the beach yeah, and he ignites his lightsaber. Mm-hmm. It's just a cool star Warsy bad guy moment. Yeah. It was neat. So those were just fun. We haven't really talked about this really quick. I know that we're, uh, we're segueing. What did you think of the fighting? The wire foo? Yeah. Exactly. The force foo. Cause there was a lot of force foo mm-hmm. as well. What do you think about that? I think it's cool. I want to see, um, I want to see how it integrates with saber combat. Yeah, gotcha. Um, which I know we're going to get um, soon. I think. I think they're it's setting up that like that's got to be happening soon. Yeah. We're big showdown already. I think I'm not a good person to ask this because I'm not the biggest fan of that in the movies that do it the best. Yeah, like Wire Fu, like Crouching Tiger. That's yeah. like one of the best that does this. Mm-hmm. I've always thought it like it has a style. It yeah, has a look. It to does. It. It's a very like specific creative choice mm-hmm. it's never been my favorite thing yeah but i under i see the the talent and the creativity that goes into that yeah and so 
I guess I'm just not the best person to judge it because okay. um, I think it, it looks well done, I guess. Yeah. The first, I really liked the the one with Indara. The one with Soul I thought was better. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, they're more grounded. Yeah. I think that's what helps it. Because I, I like it up until the point uh, that they start hopping around. Because I think that they just look weightless. Yeah. And I'm like, even- Well, that's, that's the style, right? I, I, know, you know. I know. I get that. And that's where I'm with it too. That's why I don't- I'm Yeah, that I'm like- It takes uh, me out of it. That's why I liked uh, the One Master floating, where it's like, no, that takes a lot to do that. Like they, And even you, we see it in the other movies, like Vader jumps in Cloud City and lands, and he's he's heavy still. You know, and it, like he just uses the force, I'm sure, to slow himself down, mm. basically. That I'm like, uh, I didn't like how uh, Carrie Ann Moss like, lo- felt weightless when she jumped up and everything. And I get it's the style. But other than that, I thought it was good. I just was curious. Yeah, no, um, I dug it. Mm-hmm. Speaking of things that uh, took me out of it a little bit, oh, it's yes. kind of the flip side of the coin. Yeah. Just there's two things. And I just, I'd be remiss if I did not mention them. When we first meet Osha, She's in that like t-shirt and shorts. Yeah. Did that throw you off? It, no. just, it was just so un-Star Wars-y, I thought. Well, I mean, it was about as Star wars as homeboy with a shirt off, like ironing That's his number two. Yeah. <laughs> That's number two on my list. <laughs> ironing his clothes and just, hey, I'll put a shirt on, don't worry. Dude, no, that I was, was expecting you to walk out there shirtless. Well, I enjoyed a lot of this show. That was, that's down there in like least favorite Star Wars moments for me. Yeah. It was that really was, odd. That was right out of the MCU. Yeah. Pretty cringe. In, in a bad way. Yeah. I really did not like that yeah. shirtless Yord scene. Because mm-hmm. at least with TLJ, with like that scene with Kylo. Yeah. It, that's not, cr- they don't do it in a cringe way where it's like Ray's like checking them out. She like has a offhanded comment at the end. Yeah. Like this one, you have like, you know what reminded me of? It reminded me of that scene in Guardians of the Galaxy. Where yeah. like Star Lord's getting hosed down. Yeah. You can see they like, they've like made him steam up a little bit. He's like, <sighs> you know. Yeah. I'm like, God, what are we doing? Yeah. Like, what are we doing mm-hmm. right here? This is- It's not me, for you, man. It <laughs> took me right out of it. Yeah. I did not like that scene at all. Um, I think the first one with Osha didn't bother me as much because the next time you see her in her outfit- Yeah, that's great. I love that. Like, like I was like- scrappy dude, kind yeah. of like, yeah. I was like, dude, that is an awesome outfit. I like that. I'm that with I, you. I could see Seth Solo rocking something similar to that. That uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm completely mm-hmm. in agreement. Yes. I had the same mm-hmm. thought, but that first yeah. one, she like got out of bed, it was like the t-shirt. I'm like, okay, just because you removed the inseam there- Yeah. It's just a t-shirt and shorts. Like, I, I okay, I don't know what I'd put her in, you yeah. know, as the costume designer. Yeah. But I don't know. This just seems like I could go pull this off the rack at Walmart. Yeah. So I don't- you know there's no underwear in Star Wars, though, so you got to be careful of that. Oh, uh, well, yeah. That, fair enough. I, yeah. I don't, it's, That's just supposedly, I don't so know. So we, yeah. we know how Seth would write the scene. So no, I'm, uh, hey. <laughs> Hey, I'm just getting at the whole, that, that's just like a Carrie Fisher and George Lucas thing, though. Hey, you brought it up. I'm just throwing it out there. <laughs> So anyway, I just want to mention those couple things because building up to the Yord shirtless scene, gosh, I didn't like that. Yeah. So I hope there's no more of that. Yeah. But overall, you know what? I mean, I di- I'm digging where they're going. I'm mm-hmm. digging the intrigue next week. We're going to the forest planet with Kalnaka, it looks yeah. like. And I think I'm that's where the that. big throwdown in the trailer where he throws the lightsaber. I don't know that we see that next week. Maybe not next week, but I think that it's coming up Next though. two weeks for yeah. sure, probably. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I think we're going to be seeing the showdown with Kalnaka. Yeah. And I'm 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 nervous for our boy Kelnaka. Yeah, um, yeah. Here and then gone in a flash. Now that we know that she's on the he's on the kill list. Yeah, uh, but excited for more. Honestly, I mean, like I said, even though I have my my issues, um, mm-hmm. I think there's a lot to love here. And as is always our policy here on the show, we're going to judge it at the end. Yes, and we could get to episode eight and mm-hmm. be like, hey, you know what? I had a weird start. But man, did they pull that off at the yeah. end. Holy Somehow smokes. Somehow they stuck that landing. Yeah. Or we may get to the end and be like, you know, yeah, it was okay. Yeah. Was oh. it for us? Or we may get to the end and be like, holy smoke, get away from this. Yes. Exactly. Never watch it again. Yep, F tier. Com- never coming back. <laughs> but never no, ever it, coming back. The point is, you know, we'll wait till the end. Mm-hmm. We'll wait till the end. It's true. And we'll we'll give it the, the old judgment call then. But Good stuff. And yep. at the end of the day, it's fun to have new Star Wars and to talk about new Star Wars. So, Acolytes, episodes one and two, what did you think about it? Let us know down in the comments down below. And speaking of hearing from the homies at home, I think it's time for the band questions. Clear your mind questions. 
Every week I put a prompt up on Instagram asking you guys the question of the week, asking us about the topic of the week. This week, of course, is about Acolyte episodes one and two. Let's get right to it. We got a lot of questions to answer. From Ripic underscore Tan, really enjoyed all aspects of this series so far. Maybe some more familiar aliens? Yeah, I kind of said that at the top. I, I want to see some more uh, yes. familiar faces. I was going to say, we have a, yeah, the... It's a galaxy far, far away, and it's huge, but, you know, we've gotten lots of cool creatures we've only seen once in Star Wars. Let's see some more of that. Yeah. We got some, though. We got the Moidians, you yes. know, and I'm sure well, there's sure. probably a couple more that I... There were. Yeah. Uh, oh, Wookiee, of course. Yes. Crafting underscore on underscore Ilum. How do you feel about Yord? Yord sucks. Put a shirt on. <laughs> Down with Yord. Yeah. I hope he improves or he doesn't make it out of the show. <laughs> no, that's, ter that's terrible. That's terrible. That's the father of Mace Windu. <laughs> yeah. no, wouldn't that be funny? <laughs> It'd be insane. <laughs> Jay Recky, with Carrie and Moss killed, does Acolyte take risks with killing characters, even Maine? I think so. I think that's Definitely. actually a great point. Yes. anybody, It's anybody's game here. People are going to die. Yep. Yep. Like we were just talking like Kelnaka. He's probably- Probably dead. Well, knows? she's got to live or, or she's got to kill someone. Yeah. To like progress the story. Bryce Ewins, did OSHA start the fire? That's a great question. We didn't start the fire. <laughs> I was hoping. <laughs> I was waiting, <laughs> I was waiting yeah. for it. It's why. I think that she probably did, but it's why did she start the fire? I think OSHA, not May. Or yeah, one of the two of them. Yeah. Because again, twins. So, we'll find out. Yeah. We'll find out. I think it's a great. Yeah. I think that's the mystery, right? Yeah. Alan DCG, was the Star Wars sauce just about right on this one, in your opinion? Or, since it's a new show, new sauce? I see you're a fan of the show, Alan. I know you're a fan of the show. We see you often in here. Appreciate the, the proper usage of the term sauce. Appreciate that. A um, little bit of old sauce, a little bit of new sauce. But it does have some sauce, that's for sure. Mixing sauces. Mixing sauces. Gotta be careful of that. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. do have to be careful. Sometimes, you know, you get you create an unholy concoction. It's true. But uh, but so far, we're getting some sauce and I'm happy yeah. with that. We're not, we don't, we don't got dry chicken in this place it's right true. now. We got we're getting some, we're getting some sauce. So <laughs> you said sauce a lot. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I noticed the episode where I said that a lot. I was like, dang, I really overused this term in our trailer episode. That's where I, I yeah. used it a lot. Frankie B underscore KKSC. Not terrible. Not great. Jury's still out. I mean, we kind of feel similar that we want to see more. I was going to say that, uh, I mean, there was a lot I liked. There was a lot I didn't like. But uh, that hasn't deterred me from continuing to watch. Yeah. Yeah. Um, same boat. Mm -hmm. Yep. Echo you. Gabby's about books. Who is sending Osha the visions because May thought Osha was dead, so it couldn't have been her? Great point. Maybe someone with a soul. <laughs> <laughs> He's on about this. He's been the whole time, man. <laughs> Padawan underscore pops. Do you think any of the Jedi on this hunt survives? May is betting a thousand at this moment. That's a great question. I still think that none of this can get back to someone like Master Yoda. Yeah. So. And if the, uh, if Toothy guy is as powerful as they're kind of leading on, then they don't really have a chance. Yeah. I mean, if May can like fight them and granted they're kind of toying with May, but if she can kind of hold her own mm -hmm. against, uh, against one of them then you'd have to think that the the master is much stronger than the acolyte. And if this is the Bane line, then they, they one of them has to live. It's true. Reese's Pieces of Poodoo. Mm. Anyone else getting Attack of the Clones energy? <laughs> I was a little bit, actually. Like some of the dialogue and... Uh, well, it is like a murder mystery, kind of like, because yeah. Kenobi's on like a... He's yeah, on a, a detective quest. quest. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Caleb B. Marks. Thoughts on the twins possibly being a force dyad? I also <gasps> think they might be switching sides. Brother, I, did you watch the show before, say, we, before you asked your question? My goodness, are you a time traveler? Are you Gosh. from the future? <laughs> <laughs> Josh Rice, the music in the Acolyte had the most Star Warsy vibe than any of the shows so far. That is wild. I, I don't think so. Wow. I never heard the force theme or anything like that. I didn't hear. I feel like I, I cannot recall a single 
like note. Me, yeah. From the show. Like, honestly. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, I, I, I honestly the subtitle I said my, like playing ominous music. I know it, did, yeah. it sure did. Yeah. It must have been mm-hmm. ominous music indeed. No, yeah. I, I think I'm in the <laughs> minority on this one. I've heard a lot of people say they like the music, but yeah. it's just, maybe it'll grow on me. Uh, yeah. Maybe I just wasn't listening closely enough. Mm-hmm. Jojo underscore swaggins. Favorite characters out of the gate. Go. Osha. Pip. Master Saul. Not Yord, that's for sure. Yeah. Michael underscore Kramer 98. Who do you think the Sith stranger is? Something interesting I didn't mention earlier about him. The fact that he is a stranger. So why, as a storytelling device, right? What like do you using mean by a helmet, stranger? So he's wearing a helmet. Yeah. His identity is concealed. Soul yeah. even mentions like, oh, you know, you're hiding his identity from me. As the audience... This is an era we don't know about. We don't know anybody. Yeah. Why are you hiding his identity from the audience? Yeah. Unless it's going to be a reveal. Now, that could mean two things. It's either someone you're expecting the audience to know outside of the show. Yeah. Plague is tenebrous, something right there. Darth Vader. It's going to be Vader. <laughs> <laughs> he takes off the helmet. There's just a Vader helmet It's going to be there. Kylo Ren. Exactly. <laughs> Hello. What is it? Just Ren. I was, I could see that, that like a, the, the, the original Ren. Yeah. I mean, there's some similar aesthetics yeah. to a Ren. <laughs> I was hoping you could be my evil girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> um, or this is further indication. This is Kamir. Because that's something We've already met him. within the show. Yeah. Again, why conceal this character's identity? Yeah. It makes sense to conceal the character. Like, in universe, it makes mm-hmm. sense to conceal it from those characters. But why conceal it to us, the audience? Yeah. I mean, they kind of concealed Palpatine to us. It's a very Star Wars thing. Did they? I mean, we didn't know up until Revenge of the Sith that they it's, were one and the same. We see his face, though. We see it's both all of their hooded. faces. You yeah. see him as Palpatine, but then like Asidious, he's always you hooded. You see his face, though. I mean, they're not- He's hooded. They're not, you're not you're trying to hide You're one friend. I, I did have a friend who didn't know until ex- Revenge of the Sith. Exactly. That they were, yeah, that they so were the same. There you go. Yeah. They could be red herring. I'm just pointing it out. Okay. That's all. That's all, all right. <laughs> Star Wars Time Dot Show. Is Yord kind of a douche? Yes. <laughs> he sure is. Very by the book. <laughs> and then I felt like they needed to make him cool, so they just gave him a yellow lightsaber. Yeah. Dude- I'll say it. You know what? I'm over these yellow lightsabers. I'm over like anything special. Like we just need, bad guys are supposed to be red. Good guys are blue right? and green. I know this is another unpopular. This is, Seth is usually the one with the hot takes. Here's mine. Here's mine that you can hate me on. I think yellow lightsabers are dumb for the most part. I think that they have a very specific use in Star Wars. Go way back to older public days. Cool. Down with yellow lightsabers. I'm, I'm, I'm down with yellow lightsabers because that's like a different, a completely different era. Yeah. Ray, I actually like hers. She's separating herself, making her different. Yeah. Temple guards, they have a certain job. Yep. Okay. So we can tell you apart. Explain to me why 90 years before Revenge of the Sith. Just one a, random yellow lightsaber. There's a bunch of these dudes who got yellow lightsabers. Yeah. Maybe they're going to be the temple guards. Maybe it's their lineage that will be form the temple you're, guards. You're just going to be a temple. He's going to be the first captain of the temple guard. But like, you, it's going to get demoted. I don't know what the obsession's been lately. Like, you got Luke between Empire and Return of the Jedi with his yellow lightsaber yeah. that I can't stand. I hate that so much you for should. so many reasons. Yeah. And then now you have Anakin who has this dream in this uh, the Phantom Menace book that a comic book that came out. He has this vision of what he'd be like as a Jedi. Oh, he has a yellow lightsaber. It's like, how would you even know, brother? Like, you you've never seen one. You saw Qui Gon's. <laughs> It wasn't even activated. I saw your laser sword. Yeah. Only a Jedi carries that weapon. Yeah, you're right. He never did see one. Nope. He Maybe, never did. Okay. And now people are going to use that against me. Be like, what? And he just imagined it to be yellow. It's like, fine, whatever. I mean, did it's the he? the color of sand. He wouldn't like it. Hold on a sec. I'm trying to think. Did he oh, see yeah, Darth no, Maul? No, he did. He saw Qui-Gon's and Darth did Maul's. They, did he see them activate before he flew out? I mean, he probably looked out the window. Maybe. I so I'm wondering, or did R2 He took a peek. Why did, not? <laughs> or did R2 fly him out of there? I don't well, remember. He knows that. what a laser sword is too, by the way. It's true. So he, he knows <laughs> he's seen one. Good guys have green and blue. Yep. Have Bad the right have dream, red. Anakin. It's not like you're dreaming about temple guards. Give me a break. Can't stand it. It's the color of sand. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so stupid. It is stupid. I just can't st- I, again, that's my stupid hot take. I just, Granted, uh, that's how I feel about a lot of my hot takes. Yeah. It's like, it's so stupid. I don't know why you guys like it, but whatever. Well, there you go. There's one for me. I don't yeah. usually have the hot takes. So there yeah. you go. Flame me in the comments for it. <laughs> um, <laughs> what if like, yeah. How do you feel about Mace Windu's purple lightsaber? That's fun because he has like a unique role. Like, yeah. And that's a fun behind the scenes story too. And he's the yeah. only one who's got it. Yeah. Like there's a couple that happen from time to time. Well, I mean the whip's And purple. also it's got a nice, you can make it thematic where he's like a blend between blue and red. Yeah. He has his vape pad. Yeah. Cool. The whip's purple. Yeah. The whip. We'll see. We'll see with the whip. The whip yeah. is its own thing. So maybe I'm fine with that. We'll see. I don't yeah. know. We'll get there. Tales from Tashi Station. Hey, I was just on Tales from Tashi Station. Go check that out. That was Ooh. fun. We had a fun discussion. I noticed the Jedi use the word discreet a lot. Are we seeing the cracks form in the order? So I think you're meaning like, uh, yeah, they're using a lot of yes. discretion and they're being undercover yes. and being covert. They care about their public image. Definitely. Yeah. Too much yeah. bureaucracy, too much, uh, too yep. much vanity, I they guess. Do, Maybe they that's... don't care about themselves. Well, I mean, look, they are. I was just about to say, it goes back to vain. your point. Yes, they are looking vain. They're looking gaudy. Yeah. No. Peace. Protectors mm-hmm. of the old republic. And then lastly, the artist formerly known as Diamond Figs at <laughs> Will of the Force underscore on Instagram. The set pieces blew me away. Stoked to see a return to practical locations. I'm right there with you, brother. Yeah. I thought that that was one of my favorite aspects of the show. The practical locations looked fantastic. It did look good. I hope to see more of that in the future. Mm-hmm. Closing thoughts? I had fun. I mean, I'm ready for uh, yeah for Tuesday night next week, and that's what you want. Yeah. I don't want to just be like, I guess we'll watch it. Right. So yeah, yeah it did its job. Yeah, same. Mm-hmm. I'm intrigued. I had yeah. I did have that moment at the end of uh, episode two where I was like, "Man, I'm kind of yeah. bummed that this uh, that this is it." I will admit, I'm not a huge fan of the different uh, times, run times. Of the yeah, episodes. the run times. But yeah, we'll mm-hmm. see. We'll see how it plays out. Yep. So next week, episode three of the Acolyte, we'll be watching it. We'll be covering it next week. And that's all we've got going on right now. It's pretty yep. easy. It's new Star Wars time. So it's the schedule is pretty, pretty simple. Pretty for, straightforward for, for a couple next, weeks. For the next few weeks. Mm-hmm. So hope you guys enjoyed everybody. Let us know what you think of the Acolyte. And we'll see you guys next week. I was like, I guess the internet's wrong. <laughs> oh, just, just, I made a deliberate choice not to post the Cad Bane stuff. You're welcome. Because I was going to. I was going to cut a reel about it. I was like, you know what? I'm sparing Seth. Why? Why does the internet love this guy? He's. Do you want me to cut a reel and see what? Do you want me to? Here's the whole thing, okay? And I like, we need to just sit and like, he literally, they go, oh man, we need to fill a fet shaped hole. And so they just made a character. No, they needed to fill a dirge shaped hole, actually. I get that. But here's the thing. Dirge is actually a different enough from Boba Fett. I think Cad Bane's too much like Boba Fett. He uses twin pistols. He can fly around with when a- When does Boba Fett use twin pistols? J- or Jango Fett, okay. whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Then I'm just well, like- Jango he, Fett died, so he can't he, use Exactly. Fett. They need to fill a Jango Fett hole. And it's just like, dude, they just- And they uh, filled it well. I guess so. It's just- Do you want me, you want me to make, make a reel? See what happens? You just want me to see? Just I, to, what? I just saying, some people are going to clown. I'm just saying, they're going to be like- Gonna get you're gonna get flamed. Gonna get I flamed. get flamed all the time, don't I? <laughs> no, no, it was pretty even on this Balin thing. I was surprised. I got blown out on the uh maybe on the poll, but we had it was pretty even. Like on TikTok, more people sided with you. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Again, I think it would be funny that eventually we just do a, t- a surprise tier list and it's all my hot takes. And so we gotta figure <laughs> out which one's the most egregious. <laughs> that, like, yeah. Or that should be a live stream and we get the chat to vote on what tier. Oh is. yeah, that we just kind of go, guys. We have a special tier list plan for you. <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be funny. Okay. Yeah. All right. Make sure that's down a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. All right. Are you, you're introducing us, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Welcome back. <laughs> <laughs>